What's up guys, it's Elliot here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Today's video is a little bit different, but a ton of you guys were asking me in my day in the life video how to shoot a hyperlapse. And if you haven't checked out my day in the life video, I'll link it down below. But basically today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to actually shoot a hyperlapse. So in case you don't know what a hyperlapse is, it's basically a moving time lapse and the clip at the beginning of this video is an example of one. There's a few different ways to shoot a hyperlapse, but today I'm gonna to show you the easiest way to do it without a gimbal. All you need is your camera. So let's get right into it. The first step is to actually take your photos. I'll put up a picture right here, but basically you wanna line up one point on your viewfinder to one point on the building. You guys can see it right here in this photo, but basically I lined up the middle of my viewfinder to one specific point on the building. So now what you do is you take your photo and then you take a step forward and then line up that point again to the same point on the building and take another photo. And then you're gonna repeat that, that process of taking a photo, taking a step forward, taking a photo, and taking a step forward. The process definitely takes a while because if you're shooting 24 frames a second, let's say your timeline is in 24 FPS, then 24 pictures is gonna equal one second of footage. So if you're shooting 30 or 60, let's say you're shooting 60 FPS, then 60 photos is gonna be equal to one second of footage. Essentially, each of the photos is a frame of a video. And a quick tip from framing that'll save you a lot of time is to check your framing when you're far away from the building as well as when you're right up against it because I've definitely had hyperlapses where I was far away from the building, everything lined up perfectly, but then when I was following the point on the building, by the time I got up close to the building, it was all wrong in terms of the framing and so I had to reshoot it. So definitely check the, the framing from far away as well as close. So now that you've shot your hyperlapse, you wanna actually edit it. And the way that I edit it is pretty straightforward and simple. So I'm gonna jump into my laptop and show you guys how I do it. All right guys, so now we're in Adobe Premiere Pro and if you wanna edit your photos beforehand, you definitely can. If you do, just edit one photo and then apply all the settings to every photo in the sequence. And once you're in Adobe Premiere Pro, you wanna either press Command-I if you're on a Mac or Control-I or you can right click here and then press import. But you wanna find the folder with all your files in it and then just press on the first file. And it's really important that you do this, but press options and then make sure that image sequence is selected. And this makes sure that Adobe Premiere Pro just compiles all the photos together and makes it an image sequence so you don't have to select all this. Just the first photo and image sequence and we're gonna press import. And then once it's in, we're gonna click and drag it into our timeline. And then the next step is to go to your effects and then type in warp stabilizer. It's already typed in here for me. And then drag and drop it onto the actual file. And while this is analyzing, we're gonna make a few adjustments. Make sure that this is on, the method is on position, scale, and rotation and you can mess around with the smoothness, but I like to keep it around 20 to 30. Um, and you can adjust it, and each time you're gonna have to analyze it, but the more stable your footage is, the more smooth you can have it be by ranking up that percentage. But I like to keep it around 20 to 30. Sometimes if you're, it can go up to 50, but the more that you increase the smoothness, the more that Adobe Premiere will um, crop the actual uh, the actual video and then here you can do stabilize crop auto scale but again if you do auto scale make sure you're not bringing this number up the smoothness up too high um, but but Adobe Premiere Pro is basically going to analyze this and I'll show you guys what that looks like now so that's basically it once you import the photos correctly and apply warp stabilizer you might need to mess around with the settings in warp stabilizer a little bit but that's basically all there is to the strategy if you guys have any questions at all just drop them in the comments and i'll get to them and also let me know if you want to see more of these editing tutorials thank you guys so much for watching if you got any value out of this video please drop a like and i'll end this video with a hyperlapse that i shot in new york city